Hello everyone, it's Mariners Fanatic back on a YouTube video, and in today's video we are going to be discussing the Mariners early offseason trades and transactions. In this video I'll be covering the Teoscar Hernandez trade, the Kyle Lewis trade, and then all the other little transactions that have gone on since the offseason began. Starting off with the Teoscar Hernandez trade, oddly enough this was a trade that I heard people talking about on radio, um, on other podcasts, and videos and in group chats um, on Instagram and stuff. Just everybody seemed to be like, oh, you know, this is a no-brainer. And I guess it was for Jerry and the Blue Jays GM because it happened all rather pretty quickly. Teoscar Hernandez is a Seattle Mariner. Eric Swanson and Adam Mako are now Toronto Blue Jays. Sending, going over to the Blue Jays, Eric Swanson had a great year with us. Uh, really reinvented himself with the splitter that he added over the offseason. Very, very solid, um, but ultimately the bullpen was an area of strength and the outfield is an area of weakness heading into this offseason. Uh, so you got to look at that and look at the future and what that holds. Relievers are volatile from year to year. They can be really good or really bad. So it's good to sell high on Swanson when you can. Adam Mako, I was a little disappointed about Mako being involved in this trade just because we don't really have very many solid left-handed pitching prospects. We traded away Williamson in the Castillo trade, and now we're trading away Mako. So we really don't have anybody else of note from the left-handed side as far as pitching prospects go until you get much, much lower into our farm system. But overall, not a super big deal. Definitely have time to develop that. Also, our starting rotation is looking very, very solid. So better to get the bat that we need now and worry about starting pitching later. On our end, getting Teoscar Hernandez, he's been a consistent starting everyday player since 2018. He's 29 years old, and last year in 2022, he had 25 homers, 77 RBIs, 267 average for a WRC plus of 127. Above league average, definitely a solid player. He's going to play the corner outfields in DH. Defensively, he's okay, nothing crazy, but he's a solid player and a good replacement for Mitch Hanniger if we don't re-sign him. Moving on to the Kyle Lewis trade for Cooper Hummel of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Kyle Lewis was likely to be non-tendered. He was beginning to be of no use to us. His knees couldn't handle it when we were making our playoff run. It just was not useful for us to be putting him in that DH position when he wasn't hitting very well. Ultimately, he didn't have a spot on the roster next year. And prior to the non-tender trade deadline, they wanted to get some value out of him before he was gone. So they traded him for Cooper Hummel. I've heard solid things about Hummel in the research that I've done. Uh, he's got speed. He's a utility player. He can play catcher and outfield, which is interesting. Uh, kind of similar to Dalton Varsho, who actually is the uh, Diamondbacks starting catcher along with Carson Kelly. But it's definitely a good pickup. It's a guy who can play the field, which is the most important thing. And his bat is something that can be worked on. And potentially, he could turn out all right. So ultimately, this is something that needed to happen it sucks to see Lewis go, obviously 2020 Rookie of the Year, but his second half of 2020 wasn't all that great either. So ultimately, I think we got what we could and moved on from Kyle Lewis, which is unfortunate because he's very talented still, but health-wise, he just couldn't keep it together. So moving on to the list of transactions. The offseason started off with Kirk Casale, Adam Frazier, Mitch Hanniger, and Matthew Boyd and Carlos Santana electing free agency, as well as Casey Sadler and Ryan Barucki. Both of them were on the injured list at the end of the season. Uh, they were reactivated, outrighted, and then they elected free agency. Sucks to see Sadler go, but there's a possibility we could re-sign him. Carlos Santana has already signed with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Matthew Boyd has already signed with the Detroit Tigers. Uh, we'll see if we can bring Hanniger back. I'm not sure. I'm on the fence of whether I want to or not, but we'll see how that happens. Uh, we had four players that the Mariners selected to be added to the 40-man roster. Prelander Baroa, who had a great year last year in Everett. He was also moved up to Arkansas near the end of the year, double-A. Jonathan Classe of the Modesto Nuts. He's a speedster, absolute speedster, really good player. Still young and in the lower levels, but it's definitely a guy that you don't want to lose in the Rule 5 draft. Cade Marlowe, he was selected as well. He's had a great couple years, and it surprised everybody. He's now at AAA Tacoma. We'll probably be seeing him up next year at some point. And then finally, Isaiah Campbell, 
He is now in double A, but he had a good season with mostly Everett and then some at double A. Uh, really solid pitcher, and I'm excited to see Campbell in the future. So I was talking about the non-tender deadline. Kyle Lewis was not non-tendered, but Brian O'Keefe and Luis Torrens were, as well as Luke Weaver, who they picked up earlier in the offseason. All those guys are now free agents. Sucks to see Torrens and O'Keefe go. It's good catching depth that we don't have. But we did get Cooper Hummel. We'll see how that goes. In other news, we signed uh, Jose Rodriguez to a minor league contract. Um, just a free agent, right-handed pitcher. Just a depth piece, double-A, triple-A. Um, but he could see some time with the big league club, depending on injuries throughout the season. And then finally, the most recent one, Trevor Gott was signed November 30th to a major league contract. He's a right-handed pitcher, reliever. I don't know a whole lot about him, but he, he seems okay. Uh, so we'll see how that pans out. And then one more minor league contract signing. Riley Unrow is signing back with us. Just some infield depth for AA, AAA levels. So those are all the moves that we have made up to this point. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the breakdown of the trades and transactions. I'm going to try and pump out some more videos here. Uh, I really want to get things going for the winter meetings. Um, so expect some more videos more consistently in the month of December. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Mariners Fanatic, out.